Yo guys, Tanmay of our simple snippets and today in this C++ programming tutorial, we are going to be talking about the exception handling concept in C++. Now in the previous couple of videos, we were discussing about the functions, its applications and its different types. So if you have missed that video, you can check those videos in this playlist itself. So with that being said, let's get started with exception handling. So what exactly is an exception in a program? So let me just read out the first line. So an exception is an unexpected problem that arises during the execution of a program. So it may happen that sometimes during programming, you might have syntactically written the program correct, which means that the compiler has compiled the program correctly. However, during its execution, there might be some issues and some errors which come at the runtime and at that time, the program crashes. So these kind of issues are known as exceptions. For example, you create an array of size 5 but try to access the sixth or seventh index position of that array and at that time your program will crash or for example you are trying to open a file which does not exist so that could be another example so these kind of scenarios lead to crashing of the program in between so exception handling mechanism provides a way to transfer control from one part of the program where the error exists to another so this makes it easy to separate the error handling code from the code written to handle the actual functionality of the program which essentially means that even if there is an exception your program won't crash in between and you can handle that exception and provide certain code which takes care of that exception. Now in C++, exception handling is built upon three keywords. So these are the syntax or the keywords which are essential. So they are try, catch and throw. So let's understand more about these three keywords. The first one is try block. The reason why it is called a block is because it is enclosed in curly braces just like a function. However, it is not a function. So a block of code which may cause an exception is typically placed inside this try block and it is followed by one or more catch blocks. So if an exception occurs, it is thrown from the try block to the catch block. So basically wherever you feel that that exception might occur, you put that entire piece of code inside the try block. Now comes the catch block. So this block catches the exception thrown from a try block. Code to handle the exception is written inside this catch block. Now that code can be anything which handles the exception. For example, just simply showing an error message or some code which will actually correct that exception and so on and so forth. Lastly, we have the throw syntax keyword. So a program throws an exception when a problem shows up. This is done using a throw keyword. Now you can explicitly throw an exception. For example, you want to show a divide by zero exception and we'll try to implement that practically as well. So for a certain condition, you want to throw an exception, you use the throw keyword. Now that will be more clear when we actually go ahead and write a program. Lastly, every try catch should have a corresponding catch block. That is every try block should have a corresponding catch block and a single try block can have multiple catch blocks. Now this was all about the theoretical aspect of exception handling and the three different keywords which we'll be using to perform exception handling. So this was about the theoretical aspect of exception handling in C++. So now let's try to create a program and implement this exception handling. So quickly open up your dev C++ ID or whichever ID you use and type out this program which I have written over here. So this is the main function from where the execution will begin. So what we are going to do is we are going to write a program which will accept two numbers from a user and show its division. So there is a case wherein we'll take numerator and denominator and if the denominator is zero, the division should be not defined or infinite. So in that case, the program will crash if it is not in the try clash block and I'll try to show you how it works. So let me just create first two variables, I'll say int numerator comma denominator. We'll say a message and ask the user to enter the numerator and denominator. I'll say enter two numbers or I'll say enter numerator and denominator. Then we'll take input from the user. Now we'll say int result is equal to numerator divided by denominator and we'll try to display this. So I'll say division is and I'll print the result. So let's save this as exception handling dot cpp and let's try to compile and run this. So there were zero errors and zero warnings. So we have written the program correctly, but this is without the exception handling. So right now what I'll do is I'll enter numerator five, denominator five, and you get the division is one because five divided by five will give you one. Correct. Now let's try to 
put the denominator as zero. So when I say five as numerator and zero as denominator, you can see the program is stopped working because five divided by zero should give infinity or not defined as a result. And this is the reason why the program crashes because it is not meant to calculate something which is not defined or infinity. So this is an exception situation. Now since there was no try catch block involved, the program stopped working abruptly and it hanged. So this situation is something which we need to avoid. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this code and add try catch block to it. So we know the exception will be happening at this line of code because the actual division happens here. Now according to the try definition, we add the try block where we feel the exception is going to happen. So as I mentioned, we have to use the syntax as follows. We have to write try opening and closing curly braces and include that part of the code which you feel where exception might occur. So I just wrote a try block and inside that we are performing the division. Now here we can check if denominator equal equal to zero, then we need to throw an exception. So this is how the syntax for throw is. So we will say throw throw and we need to throw something that is some value. So what we will do is we will just throw this denominator itself. That is it is going to throw the value zero and you don't need opening and closing curly braces if there is only single statement inside a if block. But for simplicity, I will just write it over here as well. So when this denominator is going to be zero, it is being thrown outside this entire try block and this division will not occur. Instead, the control will be transferred from here to a corresponding catch block. So now we need to write the code for catch block. So I'll say catch. So this is how the syntax for catch block is opening and closing round brackets. And inside this, we have to catch something that is the value that is being th thrown. So in this case, the value that is being thrown is an integer value. So inside this, I'll write int ex, which is short form for exception. And then again opening and closing curly braces and inside this we can say a message saying divide by zero not allowed which is an exception. So a quick recap, initially when we did not have try catch and we did not handle the exception, our program was crashing because when we enter denominator as zero, anything divided by zero gives us not defined or infinity, which is not being handled by the program and the program was stopping abruptly and it was crashing. So now what we've done is we've handled this exception by using a try block. Inside the try block, we included the line where the actual division happens, that is this line. And before this division happens, we check whether the denominator is zero or not. And if the denominator is zero, we throw that zero and the control is transferred right at this sentence itself or right at this line itself to the catch block. So this result or this line will never happen or this line will never be calculated by the program itself. So from here itself the transfer will be thrown to the catch block. Inside the catch we are catching that integer value that is being thrown which is essentially going to be zero. So if you want you can print it over here itself. And we print out a message saying exception divided by zero not allowed. And if the denominator is not zero, then this if block will not be executed. The result will be calculated and you can see at the last line, the division will be shown. So let's save this and try to execute this. I'll say compile and run. Okay, we got an error because this result was declared and defined inside the try block. It needs to be declared over here. Just remove this, save this. This is because the result variable was declared inside the try, try block. So once the try block was over, its scope got over. That is, it was not, it went out of scope. So in order to make it global, that is globally available inside the entire int function, you had to declare it over here. Let me just save this. Let's try to compile and run this. Okay, so zero errors and zero warnings. Now it is asking for numerator and denominator. So let's try to enter something. I'll say six. I'll say denominator is 2, the division is 3. So it's working fine when we enter proper integers that is denominator is not 0. Now let's try to compile and run it again. I'll say 5 or 6 and now I'll say denominator is 0. So there you go, we got an exception that is divide by 0 not allowed. And you can see this value is 0. Also the division is 0 be is being printed because that is outside the catch block. Since the division did not occur, the default value of this result variable is set to 0. That is why we got the output as 0. Also notice that the program did not crash in between or did not hang. So we successfully handled the exception and we also showed an exception message. So this is how you perform exception handling and it is essentially done so that your program does not crash in between and you execute the program successfully.
So that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood the concept of exception handling, why we need exception handling and how to practically implement exception handling. Now we can also create our own user defined exceptions and define when exactly an exception should occur and when not. But that we'll discuss in later part because it would involve inheritance and classes which we still have to discuss. So if you have any queries or comments, you can always put them in the comment section. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Peace.